Welcome to the next session on functional analysis. In this session, we will continue our discussion on linear functionals. So, actually, we are going to um, discuss a theorem. Suppose f is a non zero linear functional on E. So, E is a linear space and f is a linear functional on E and f is not identically equal to 0. That is what is meant by f element of E hash minus 0. Okay. So, a linear functional means it is a linear transformation from E to K. K is the scalar field. Then, co-dimension of kernel of f is equal to 1. And the next result says that if f and g are in E hash minus 0 means if f and g are two non-zero linear functionals on E and kernel of f is same as kernel of g then there exists a lambda not equal to 0 such that g is equal to lambda f means if f and g are two non-zero linear functionals on E with the same kernel then f and g are equal um, up to a scalar means uh, f g is a scalar multiple of f or f is a scalar multiple of g and the third statement says that if l is a closed subspace of e and co-dimension of l is equal to 1 then there exists a linear functional f on e hash or there exists a linear functional on e such that kernel of f is equal to l means any closed subspace of e is the kernel of some linear functional on e ok so we have three results here we have to prove all these three so let us prove the first one so the first statement says that co-dimension of kernel of f is equal to 1 and what is meant by co-dimension? Co-dimension of kernel of f equal to 1 means dimension of E over kernel of f is equal to 1. This is what we have to prove. The dimension of the quotient space E over kernel f is equal to 1. Okay. So, we are given that f is a non-zero linear functional. f is not identically 0. Okay and kernel of f is a closed subspace of E. Since f is not identically 0, there exists some x prime which is not equal to 0 in E such that f of x prime not equal to 0. Okay, Because if f is non-zero, there exists some point on E um, whose image is non-zero. And of course, this x prime will not be 0 because any linear map maps 0 to 0. So, if x prime is equal to 0, f of x prime will also be 0. So, it is clear that this x prime is non zero. Now, I am taking x naught as x prime divided by f of x prime, x prime divided by f of x prime. So, what will be f of x naught? f of x naught will be f of x prime by f of x prime and this f of x prime is a scalar you can take it outside so this will be f of x prime by f of x prime which is equal to 1 so if i take x naught as x prime by f of x prime i will get f of x naught is equal to 1 now let x element of e be arbitrary then x minus f of x into x naught will be an element of kernel of f. Why? f of x will be f of x minus f of x into x, uh, x naught will be f of x minus f of x since f of x is a scalar into f of x naught and we know that f of x naught is equal to 1. So, this is nothing but f of x minus f of x which is equal to 0. 
so that x minus f of x into x naught will be in kernel of f. Then I can write x as f of x into x naught plus y where this y is not nothing but x minus f of x into x naught. So, just add them f of x into x naught plus x minus f of x into x naught is nothing but x and this x minus f of x into x naught will be in kernel of f. So, actually we are decomposing x as an element of kernel of f plus some uh, some other thing ok. So, uh, this y is an element of kernel of f and I claim that this decomposition of x is unique. Let us check that. Suppose uh, I can write x as lambda times x naught a scalar multiple of x naught plus z where z is a is an element of kernel of f. So, here also we have taken um, x as f of x into x naught plus y where the first term is a scalar multiple of x naught and the second term is an element of kernel of f ok. So, here this de decomposition is done such that the first term is a scalar multiple of x naught and the second term is an element of kernel of f. So, in the same way here I have taken x as a scalar multiple of x naught plus an element of kernel of f. Then f of x will be f of lambda x naught plus z which is same as lambda is a scalar you can take it outside and you can apply the linearity of f. So, lambda into f of x naught plus f of z. Now, uh, we know that f of x naught is 1 and f of z is 0 because z belongs to kernel of f. So, that this will be lambda times 1 plus 0 which is same as lambda. So, this f of x is lambda. Now, uh, this x uh, I have I have uh, got that this lambda is same as f of x and we have x is equal to f of x naught f of x into x naught plus z. Here instead of lambda I have taken f of x. So, x is equal to f of x into x naught plus z and this implies z is equal to x minus f of x into x naught which is equal to y itself ok. So, I have got uh, x is equal to f of x into x naught plus y. So, this decomposition is unique. So, you can express each x element of E as a scalar multiple of x naught and an element of kernel of f in a unique way. So, that what is E over kernel of f? E over kernel of f is equal to actually E over kernel of f is equal to set of all x plus kernel of f where x varies over E ok or class of x set of all class of x or cos set of x where x varies over E this is our uh, kernel of f uh, E over kernel of f ok. But each x can be written as lambda x naught plus an element of kernel of f. So, class of x means class of uh, f of x into x naught or lambda times x naught plus y ok which is same as f of x into class of x naught plus class of y but since y belongs to kernel of f this class of y will be 0. So, this is nothing but a scalar f of x into class of x naught. So, any class of x can be written as a scalar say lambda into class of x naught ok. 
so any class x can be written as some scalar into class of x naught where the scalar varies over the scalar field k so this e over kernel of f is span of class x naught we can construct e over kernel of f with a single element class of x naught that means the dimension of e over kernel of f is equal to 1 we need only a single vector to span the entire e over kernel of f the dimension of e over kernel of f is equal to 1 means co dimension of kernel of f is equal to 1 so this is our first statement now let us check the second one the second statement says that if f and g are both non-zero linear functionals and kernel of f is same as kernel of g then there exists a lambda not equal to 0 such that lambda f is equal to g means if f and g both have the same kernel then f is a scalar multiple of g or g is a scalar multiple of f so suppose f is a non-zero uh, linear functional then we have seen in the first section that any x element of e has a unique decomposition x is equal to a scalar into x naught plus an element of kernel of f so apply g on this x so g of x will be f of x is a scalar take it outside f of x into g of x naught plus g of y but we have given that kernel of f is same as kernel of g so if y is in kernel of f y is in kernel of g also means g of y is equal to 0 so this term will become 0 so what is g of x g of x is equal to f of x into g of x naught for all x element of e okay that means this g of x is the same as a scalar g of x naught into f of x and this is true for every x element of e so i will write this as some lambda so i have g of x is equal to lambda into f of x for all x element of e and this means g is equal to lambda f okay so thus we have the second result and the third result says that let l be a closed subspace of e and co dimension of l is given as 1 then we have to prove that this l is kernel of some linear functional f so we have given that co dimension of l is equal to 1 means dimension of e over l is equal to 1 dimension of e over l equal to 1 means we need only a single um, element of e over l to span the entire e over l so this e over l can be written as a scalar lambda into class of x naught where lambda varies over the scalar field k for some class class of x naught for some coset uh, coset of x naught and this coset of x naught means x naught plus capital L this is an element of e over l now for any x element of e this class of x can be written as lambda times class of x naught coset of x is equal to lambda times coset of x naught for some lambda element of k why you take an x from e corresponding to that uh, corresponding to this x element of e we have a coset of x in e over l and e over l can be spanned by a single element class x, uh, coset of x naught so you can write class of uh, coset of x as lambda times coset of x naught for some scalar lambda okay so this x is equal to uh, if if these two do these two classes are same means actually we have uh, class of x coset of x is equal to uh, lambda times coset of x naught means coset of lambda x naught if two elements have the same coset then their difference x minus lambda x naught is an element of 
L. Okay, I will call this element as y. y x minus lambda x naught is denoted by y. So what is x? I can write x as lambda x naught plus y. That's I have written here. So x is equal to lambda x naught plus y for some y element of L. And we know that this expression is unique. We have proved in result 1. So I am defining f from e to k by f of x equal to this lambda. So you take any x element of e, take an x element of e arbitrarily. It has a unique decomposition x is equal to lambda x naught plus y. Okay, where y is an element of kernel of f or uh, y is an element of L. And I am defining f of x as this lambda, f of x equal to this lambda. Now this f is a linear map, why? Suppose I have, uh, let me rub this. Suppose I have f of x plus y, then I can uh, write uh, x plus y as I can write x as some lambda 1 x naught plus z1 and y as lambda 2 x naught plus z2 so that x plus y is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 into x naught plus z1 plus z2 where z1 and z2 belongs to L therefore z1 plus z2 is an element of L. So since we know that this expression is unique I can uh, I will get f of x plus y is equal to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and this lambda 1 is nothing but f of x and lambda 2 is nothing but f of y. Similarly if you multiply uh, or if you take f of cx if x is equal to lambda x plus y cx is nothing but c lambda x plus c y ok but since y is an element of l c into y is also in l and here i will get f of cx is nothing but c lambda which is same as c into f of x so this mapping f is linear and uh, suppose x is an element of l if x is an element of L, I can write x as in this way, uh, if, if x is in L, x is in E itself. So I can uh, write x in a unique way as a scalar multiple of x0 plus an element of L. Here x itself is an element of L, so that I can write x as 0 times x0 plus x. Then what will be f of x? f of x will be 0 into f of x naught which is 0 plus um, okay I will get f of x equal to uh, I have x is equal to 0 x naught plus x then by our definition if x is equal to lambda x naught plus y f of x is lambda so here x is equal to 0 x naught plus x so f of x is nothing but the scalar 0 so if f of x is equal to 0 then x is in kernel of f. So if x element of L then we have, we have x element of kernel of f. Um, similarly if x is in kernel of f then f of x equal to 0. Since f of x equal to 0 I can write x as 0 x naught plus something means x is an element of L. Okay. So kernel of a this l is kernel of some linear map f this is what result 3 says and we will continue our discussion in our next class